It's the new year, and what better way to celebrate new beginnings than to gush about the future of our beloved brain rot, Kingdom Hearts. Since I was apparently blacklisted from the nice list, I figured I'd share with you all my rejected letters to Santa. I mean, my Kingdom Hearts wish list. Let me just make a few edits here. I will go over some little what ifs that I would like to see happen in the series. They're mostly story things, by the way. I have like zero expectations for anything in gameplay because I'm easy to please. Just hand me a controller and sit my ass in front of the console and I will pay attention to the anime Mickey Mouse game, okay? So let's not wait. Disclaimer, I don't doubt some of these are gonna be super outdated as the series unfolds, but who knows? Bit of time from now and I may come back at you with a new and updated list. You're stuck with me. Forever. I don't know if this is a spoiler, the original Final Fantasy VII games have been out for well over a decade, but in case you didn't know, he's dead. Yeah. Like, turned into Swiss cheese. In the Kingdom Hearts universe, though, we don't really know what happened to him. Considering we see no sign of him in a post-birth by sleep coliseum, I welcome the idea that he did in fact die! Yay! But. Death doesn't have to be the end. Quadratum was described by Strelitzia as something of an afterlife for her, and supposedly that's why Sora's there too. So why can't the same be said for Zack? Death is already looking to be pretty significant to Kingdom Hearts 4, and Dark Road really made it a point to address the connections between the Underworld, the Final World, and all that. Plus, like, the Colosseum, the Underworld, it has this, like, tie with Final Fantasy characters. So, while I wouldn't be opposed to simply seeing Zack make a reappearance in the Underworld, I think it would be even cooler to see him out and about in Quadratum. Or even just being able to meet Sora. Like, come on. <laughs> would these two dorks not get along super well? Listen, this one is going to get a bit out there, but bear with me for a moment. A kingdom key for the realm of light, a kingdom key for the realm of dark. If Mickey were to give Riku the key for the realm of dark, wouldn't it just be the coolest way to round out Riku's character arc? For one, kingdom key was originally his. It was yours first, wasn't it? But you succumbed to the darkness you could not control. And your prize, the Keyblade, passed on to Sora instead. Your mistakes always end up being other people's problems. <laughs> what the fuck? Chill! And then he struggles with the darkness, accepts it, and then masters it. So who better than him to be responsible for the world that houses darkness in such a big way? I think that'd be really satisfying, as well as kinda wholesome for him and Mickey. What with all they've been through together. And come on, wouldn't it be cool if he had a matching keyblade with his bro? we have been consistently robbed of some quality princess bonding time. Seeing as how Kairi is in her self-care and self-improvement era, and while Master Aqua is a wonderful person to be helping her along that path, what if along the way she confides in those who share similarity with her on a deeper level, like princesses of heart? How deep can it be? Well, you got a heart of pure light, which the darkness naturally craves. 
But that light also tends to be used by villainous people for villainous things. I feel like it's a lesser addressed responsibility that I'd just like to see the princesses talk about more. Like, do they feel scared? Do they feel guilty? And what do they do to feel brave about it? Now, the only way I would be happy with this is if we do away with all the spiteful bullshit usually associated with Disney princesses. Like, can we never, ever, ever repeat that Wreck-It Ralph 2 scene? Please, God, I hate that movie. Look, it's funny because we are self-aware. Please laugh. Anyway, no. I know there's a lot of rumblings about wanting a Kyrie game, and I won't go that far. But Kairi going on her own on little quests to discover herself with those who have the same light as her could be so precious. This could also be the way to integrate the new princesses, by the way. Whoever they are. Right now we only got what? Elsa, Anna, Rapunzel? Who else do you guys think could be a princess of heart? This could also help her grow into her own kind of Keyblade wielder, you know? Not just trying to be the same as everyone else. Because... Whether we like it or not, she isn't the same as everyone else. In fact, she isn't even all that like the rest of the princesses. She's an exceptional case being a Keyblade wielder. But that's not the only reason she's exceptional. She, unlike the former Seven, kept her light. Which leads me to another Kyrie idea. happened upon a very interesting analysis of Kyrie's Keyblade, Destiny's Embrace. Over on Tumblr by user Phoenix Downer. Please go take a look because it's a really good read. But one part that stood out to me was the fact that Kyrie's Keyblade happens to have the King Chess piece on it. I never noticed it before, but thematically, it makes things a lot more interesting, doesn't it? If Kyrie is in fact the queen piece on this grand scheme we call the chessboard, that means not only is she the most powerful piece, but she has the duty to protect the king. The king being Sora. Something she did fulfill in KH3, mind you, in keeping Sora's body together so that he could pull his shit together. Perhaps that's why she kept her light, unlike the former seven princesses. Well, as the original princesses of hearts, time for protecting the pure light has ended. They have passed the light to others. But Kyrie hasn't passed on her power. Is she one of the new seven? She must be. But still, she chose to wield a keyblade and fight with us as one of the guardians of light. But suppose that her duties still aren't done and she still keeps that light throughout. What if she's like the only one that continuously keeps the light? Then I think it would just be amazing if Kyrie graduates from Princess of Heart to Queen of Heart. Like think about it, think about it. The comparisons have already been out there. Sora been depicted as the king since the start, and now Kyrie seemingly there to join him in royalty. I already made this whole video before talking about light and dark and balance and all that. And one of the ideas I posed was seeing more of light being an offensive force. If Kyrie could weaponize her Princess of Heart status in a big way like that, she could be really something else. One worthy to be compared to the Queen chess piece. I want Sora to reunite with the, the World Ends With You guys. Maybe even meet some of the Neo characters. I really wanted this for KH4 because like, come on, it was set up so perfectly. They got Akiko Ishibashi on the writing team and the significance of Shibuya and Shinjuku. Like, ugh, why would you cock tease us like this? Why? Why? If Lark's scene is going to come back as Elrena, I hope she's still mean. I get the impression that even as Elrena, she still had hints of it. At least it was indicated by her Chirithi saying it's not normal for her to care about others or whatever. But uh, I'm gonna need that energy she had as Lark's scene to continue. Why? 
I don't know. I don't have any justification for it. I just like unapologetic bitches. Full disclosure, my opinion, the best team will always be Sora, Donald, and Goofy. I don't agree with this burning desire people have to split the half pints up. Like, no, I refuse. However, I wouldn't mind having a moment where we get to see these childhood friends go at things in battle together. Maybe for one section of the game or another. Kind of like how KH2 has endgame stuff where you get to have just Sora and Riku. A team attack between the Destiny Islands kids could be legendary though. Just imagine it. Riku with the dark, Kairi with the light, Sora and the balance between both. That would go so hard. Plus I think being able to play through some quality time between these three is long overdue. Hooray! You made it through my fanfiction in video format. Truth is, I'm one of those weirdos that doesn't have, like, super high expectations for Kingdom Hearts. And it's not because I'd settle for anything. It's just that this series rarely disappoints me. So no, don't take any of these to mean that I would, like, have a full-blown tanty if I didn't get them. They're just cute little what-ifs. Some of which I'm sure you've seen expressed somewhere before, because they're pretty common wants for this series, I think. But if there's any more, I'd love to hear them. So what are some things you'd like to see happen in Kingdom Hearts? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you next time. See ya!